So, hey everyone, hope you had like a nice break. Sure. Uh, I see that some people are still entering the room, so we are waiting for you here. Uh, first of all, what I want to say is that no, we are not at the NBA uh, selection for the basketball, although <laughs> me and, uh, and Zolt over here can, uh, can send you this message. We are still at Next Pharma, and uh, we have after a lot of sessions about uh, customer experience, uh, we will have like a breakthrough topic, and we were discussing uh, today about the tectonic changes in the next pharma, in the in the pharma area. So maybe I will let the, the speakers over here to introduce themselves, and after that we will start the the topics. Let's start so. with with the, with the taller one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, the tall guy, the, one of the sales guy in the group, right? Well, we are the sales yeah. guys. In the group. <laughs> okay, uh, hello everybody. Um, my name is George Schafranka. I'm dealing with Salesforce operations at Gadeo Richter, and I have, a, I have an experience in the pharma, 25 plus years, so I believe I've seen a couple of things in the, <laughs> in the industry, just like you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, my name is Gonzalo Yerena. I am the Global Commercial Excellence Lead at uh, Borba Pharma. Um, 17 years of experience in life science, not only pharma, genetic diagnostics and chemicals for the pharma industry. I'm from Peru, which is very close from here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My name is uh, Germano D'Amore, only 23 years in pharma, so I'm the younger here on the stage. <laughs> and um, I, cover, I worked over 45 markets, um, good experiences in uh, Asia for quite some time and in the northern part of Europe. Salesforce Operations Director, and of course, a special interest in field force management. Uh, HCP engagement lately, and uh, a few other things in BD and uh, commercials, yeah. e-commerce, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Thank you as well. Very di diversified, as you can see. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe let's start, and uh, let's start with the first topic, which is like, what are the future capabilities of the CRM to connect the pharma with the business needs and also align with the customer experience? So, yeah. <laughs> In, in our rehearsal, we agreed that, that with this question, we ask the organizers to turn off the cameras. We, we don't want to replay it, I, I don't know, how, after how many years, and just to face ourselves that, okay, we made bad predictions. So it's very hard to do it. Of course, we don't have the crystal ball. From my perspective, I, I, would, I would still be bold, but again, turn off, please. <laughs> AI, on the long run, for sure, could boost the, the, the usage and the usability of the CRM. Specifically, I would say that finding good patterns. So we are sitting on a lot of data, and CRM, with the help of the AI, could really help us to find the good patterns, where we are good at in finding the, the, the right journeys along with the cost customers, and maybe eliminate the not so good journeys, what we are setting up. I'll give you an example. Once you have 50 markets, and you are working on a lot of markets, right? And I wouldn't say that 50 different strategies, but several different strategies, right? And if you have a good comprehensive CRM put in place with the help of AI, you can find uh, the winning ones and let them run and show all the others, that, hey, follow this one. So that could be a big help uh, in the future when it comes to CRM incorporated with the AI. The second thing what I wanted to add that regarding the future that Maybe the near future, for some countries, this, definitely this is the present, especially some ter theropathic areas, but I agree with the presenter yesterday, excellent presentation, I think it was Carlos, I guess, right? Who said that, okay, medical is very much important, and I fully agree with that. So, incorporating medical activities into the different kind of sales automated activities and marketing automated activities and put it into the platform represented by a CRM, that would be a huge step forward, for sure. So these are my two points when it comes to the future. Turn, turn back on, please. <laughs> Thank you. Passing the ball to you. Uh, well, I, um, from my perspective, as you were mentioning, we don't know what will happen, yeah, or how the technology changes will, will, we will have. Yeah, we can see already some strong noise in the market, no, uh, one of the players leaving the platform, or the other players, etc. But from my point of view, um, yeah, the changes needs to be, what we as a users, you know, the pharma companies, 
we are expecting is that technology will help us to drive more customer engagement, to address more of our business. And this is not one potential, one single platform can be complemented. Yeah? But also we relied on, on them and they need to learn about our, more and more our business and help us in, in driving this. I think technology will, will help us more and more, yeah? but uh, also uh, one single provider or two single providers, I don't think that is the, the big solution. No? It, it, it depends on your, the type of company, life cycle management, you know, so where you, uh, the type of company that you are. You are a small pharma company, a mid-size, a big one, global, regional, local. You know? That's uh, my perception. Thank you. But if you can build on that, uh, I think it's also, um, I mean, I've seen a lot of good examples and already some very interesting best practices in the past uh, sessions. I still believe um, the future of CRM, uh, it largely uh, depends on the life cycle management of every, C uh, every single company, um, depending on where you play. You play oncology, you play, uh, you, you play in the rare disease area, or primary care, or secondary, uh, secondary care. I think it's, uh, it's really a dirimant, uh, uh, let's say, assumption to be taken into account. And of course, uh, based on that, every single company must then develop the use case they, they need to be successful, to increase the customer engagement. And uh, something to be added on top of the foundation of, uh, of uh, CRM, uh, including the um, user experience, including uh, all the vertical, um, let's say, processes that might need to, uh, to be reviewed, like setting up any detailing uh, or a specific campaign on a specific touch point. And at the end, uh, we are driving customer, customer experience through AI, through data. Um, and of course, uh, this is very much uh, something that uh, really every single company has to decide. Um, if you have a product that drives the market, um, you might even need, you might need uh, some less customer experience compared to a company that might need to drive market share and they might need to have a strong field force. And um, of course, uh, um, this is, again, is going to have an impact on the way you set up your, uh, your uh, CRM. On top of that, uh, it triggers also a matter of, should we go for a flat solution or should we go for something that is flexible and adaptable uh, on a country by country basis? And this is again a question to be asked. <laughs> Thank you. Speaking about this uh, from a country to country basis, what is the level of flexibility and the adaptability of this area um, in pharma? Is it really pharma so unique in the capabilities or I don't know, can we adapt solutions from other markets as well? Maybe Passing Gonzalo, you should start first. You <laughs> yeah. use the word first, flexibility, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. I think uh, we said that uh, at least I, I truly believe that you need to to build based on, on some kind of a standardization and then give flexibility. In our case, and in, in, in the companies also that I work at, we, we try to implement a global solution, yeah, but uh, with different levels of, with minimum standards and then you need to give flexibility. So it's not the same that working in Europe, that working, I don't know, in Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan or even, I don't know, Vietnam, yeah, where you need to build, obviously, a, a, you have different models or different uh, uh, specific configurations in Europe that you don't have in those emerging markets. No? It's important to, that your solution or the solution that you, that you have in place will be able to manage this, but with the minimum standards that you can build on top of this and not create like a monster of different uh, heads. Yeah? And then you, you, you drive on inefficiencies and obviously you will never arrive to the objectives, the business objectives that you have as a company. Yeah, well, I, I would put this word flexibility in, a, in a, a bit of a different context. So we all agree, I guess, and, and the whole today and yesterday session was about, okay, now we are working in a more and more complex environment, right? Mm -hmm. Intentionally, because we want to provide a, an even a better customer experience journey. And that's good. But what is the consequence? We are building more and more complex processes around us, right? So CRM must be flexible to address those very complex processes. And on the other hand, should be able 
to simplify these processes for the sake of the usability, right? So when, we, when it comes to the end users, who are customers in a sense, right? Frontier representatives. So that we have to simplify sometimes in order to make sure that they are really on the top of the uh, story and, and be able to deliver and, and provide the value we, we imagine to provide the value. So when it comes to flexibility, simplification is something I believe is, a, is an important must in, when it comes to the tool itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Well, I think that we are all aligned. Uh, I still um, I stick with the first, the previous sentence I made about the life cycle management driving, um, you know, the decision and therefore the flexibility as well. Um, from from a, a big corporation standpoint, uh, to go flat perhaps is a better option with some localization where required. For a medium-sized company, um, it might then uh, give a country more degree of freedom because they may adapt. And even, I mean, considering that um, um, digital uh, is by definition uh, more and more local, uh, if, you, if you go to Thailand, if you go to Malaysia, you you spend a couple of weeks working with the team in Mexico, that you see the approaches are pretty different. The needs are the same, but you know, uh, triggers and drivers are uh, maybe different. Um, and so the flexibility is needed. I like simplification. Um, and also looking, and looking at the CRM as a way to pull through new quality K, uh, KPIs. Because also if we are driving a transition, we are driving a digital transformation as to cover not just the marketing functions, the medical functions, but also the medical reps, our field forces, because still today, we might see it or not, face-to-face um, -face interaction, uh, and for the next two or three years, it's gonna be the same, uh, is still critical, and uh, let's say a big, uh, a, a big uh, touch point for pharma. Crystal so, ball um, predictions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> even, but to drive this, we might need to also build and develop and make clear KPIs, because otherwise the people might only look at coverage, frequency, coverage, coverage, uh, and uh, actually we need to build on, uh, on the foundation, instilling elements of digital, of uh, let's say data, data analytics, uh, and I believe this is the next stage to complete the, the transformation and increasing and making and bolstering the HCP engagement process that we already started in many companies, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. All three of you have mentioned about uh, the global CRM and global strategies. Are there maybe some points that we should consider when uh, launching like global, global CRM to a local market or to regional market? Well, I can give you the experience that I have in some companies also implemented uh, the CRMs, yeah? and obviously every cycle you have for new a new solution or up upgrade of your current solution yeah, is uh, you need to to start with the what is the minimum standards that you you need at this stage, and obviously build on on top of this and thinking in the uh, difference geographic differences, yeah but also not losing the, the mind on the change management that you need in the sales team. Because at the end, you know, the CRMs were created based on the work of the sales force, you know? And we think that they are sometimes superhumans that they are changing their mindset immediately from this screen, you know, because the other screen is like, a, you know, more nice, etc. There is a change management process on, on top. From my perspective, it's uh, basically Developing uh, a global a global solution, yeah, that will help you to create this change management uh, or speed up this change management process, no, it helps a lot. And then the certain localizations that you will need to implement, depending on the maturity of each of the markets. It is definitely a burning question. I, in one of the morning session, I, I saw uh, that that people raised hands that they are representing globals and locals. It was a nice mix, I guess. So if we could start a debate, there would be a very different view, I guess, because the, 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 how to say the goals and the needs are very much different. Uh, maybe this is something what we can, we can agree on for sure. Uh, as a global guy, my personal perspective in, in, this, in this regard, that, that again, coming back to my very first point, we need to understand the good patterns. And we need to understand what are the 
the good practices. And for that reason, a global rollout of a global CRM solution is, is definitely a must. But on the other hand, we need to understand the local specificities, right? Just how you explain. Mm -hmm. So how to come to a solution? Maybe this is the CRM itself. Who can fix it with the, with the uh, needed and a must uh, flexibility in this regard? So this is an ongoing battle, I guess. Is never I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure there will be a winner in this regard. But this is not bad. So that th there is a good internal debates in the organizations. Yeah. I think if I can build on on this, we we need to be very careful also as well in the terms what we call in localizations, because sometimes we start creating like a, the monsters of seven heads. No? Yeah. On top, on top of top, and at the end you have two different. So completely different solutions is the the mass that we were discussing is basically set up these standards this is the minimum that we need to work yeah. in all in all the countries and be careful what you are uh, developing for market to market no? um, but obviously we we depend on also the, that technology at, at the end however the current suppliers and future suppliers and vendors will help us to build the capabilities that the pharma companies needs to have a better customer engagement, which is the topic of this of this event, plus also the new challenges. You know, I remember when we were start implemented in, in different companies, MSLs. You no, know, how we will eat this? <laughs> how we will, what is the role? How we will integrate in the CRM? And then people start thinking, okay, the CRM is not only for the sales force, uh, for medical, for marketing. And then they want to integrate more and more and more things, and we need to be careful also as well. It's a BI system <laughs> in, in combined with a CRA. What is this? No, that's the topic to have a clear understanding about what kind of solution do you want and what is the minimum of standards to to mm -hmm. set up. Well, if we can uh, keep building, um, I think it's very much what we our envisioning uh, of our CRM in each and every company in the next. Uh, I want to say 10 years, three years for me would be already enough as the digitalization and technology is progressing pretty, pretty quickly. Um, definitely is to set up the right um, use cases and the, as a use case like, you know, um, unique customer ID or um, I don't know, any detailing uh, a vertical or a portal, uh, a medical community has to be clear. The description must be clear, the added value to the business. Um, the policies and the SOP is required to make this, let's say, real, mm -hmm. and which are the enablers. So the technology and so on and so forth. I think having clear, this uh, clear in mind and uh, working with the team um, in, each, in uh, each company and defining priority, those use cases are critical. Others are might be postponed. I think it would really lay some, uh, some, uh, some uh, clarity. And of course, uh, again, uh, I think it's, um, it is also a way to stay with the in-house CRM, or best of breed, getting your CRM, so to keep the look and feel, so the field force is not going to be disrupted, but they might get a new engine uh, providing more information. It's also a way, because the CRM, at least for me, represents the way of working of an organization. So, and moving to a market solution, you need, you need to be careful how much you can mm -hmm. customize and how much this is going to have an impact on, uh, on, on the field force execution. Mm -hmm. So this is a, another, let's say, um, uh, point to be taken into consideration. Sure. And then driving what the colleagues just, uh, mm -hmm. just shared with flexibility, because maybe not all the use cases can be, let's say, uh, good for that specific market, but having three, four, five, six, I don't know, there are thousands of, post of uh, potential use cases. And, uh, and this uh, would drive at least having a flat uh, number across the globe plus a few locals. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I believe we have time just for one question. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Yep, then.
-hmm. No mercy from them. <laughs> from my perspective, one size doesn't fit all. Uh, not because there are two players or big players in, in the market will apply this maybe for my current company. No, It depends what is the size of my company, the territories that I operate, what is the response that I will have from the, from the supplier, and what is the, uh, how I can say, configuration, complexity, uh, et cetera. There are several things that we put in, in context to review this. Obviously, price is one, one of these, and what is the necessary developments that we will need to do to adapt to our business model, no? To achieve our business objective. It's not from my perspective. Uh, uh, we will choose this because it's the top of the player, and it's like a, I don't know. No, I <laughs> doesn't make sense a, for me. It is a, a big question. <laughs> it's not easy to answer in a few seconds. But I believe that the company, in the moment in which, uh, uh, actually, they should also institutionalize this uh, once in a while, eh? so to see if the current CRM and uh, all the, the, the multi-channel, uh, omni-channel system are stay still uh, working well, uh, to run an envisioning exercise, and uh, let's say uh, being held by also a third-party external player, to actually really uh, validate uh, and uh, assess is uh, the current status is going to be successful in the next uh, two to three years. We did it. It took uh, a year almost of hard work to shape what is going to be CRM for us, at least for uh, Menarini, in the next uh, three years. And it was really uh, a, big, a big exercise. And then you see which are the pros and cons. Uh, again, uh, in the context of your life cycle management uh, and what you need to deliver, and also looking at the CRM as a contributor at your sustainability, because I can blend uh, Phil Force activities, digital, and the other touch points and medical to actually review, for instance, the selling allocation of uh, some uh, brands, finding a new blend and more uh, sustainable business-wise. Mm -hmm. One sentence from you also. Yeah, um, yeah. if I want to consistent with what I said in the last couple of minutes, just what I would offer you that, that a good CRM should be able to really elaborate from the tons of data generated inside of it to really point out that whether this is a good process, what we are doing, whether or not that good process. If the CRM can do that, that's a good CRM. <laughs> Go for it. Pay for it. Thank you. Uh, if you all have more questions, I'm sure the speakers will be still approachable. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.